Welcome to r slash choosing beggars, where you can buy used ladies underwear. On this next post, OP is trying to sell a watch on eBay and he gets this reply. I see in your listing that you upgraded from an older Apple watch. Why not, instead of selling the watch, give it to someone like me who wants it? Selling it is just greedy on your part. I'm happy to take it off your hands and I'll pay a shipping fee of $7.50, which is more than reasonable. Please respond right away because I would like the watch by New Year's Eve. On this next post, OP is giving away a video game for free. So, is the game free? Yeah. So, can you sweeten the deal a little bit? How? It's free. Just come pick it up. Well, that's the problem. Can you bring it over to my place? Bye. F you! On this next post, OP is an artist. Hi, so regarding that job posting, what exactly do you mean? I don't know, maybe you could draw an awesome logo, but totally for free. I don't do commissions for free. Oh, no, 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 it's not like that. It's an honor for you to be allowed to draw for me. I'm sorry, but I've literally never heard of your brand. <laughs> right? If it's such an honor, why does this guy have to beg other people to work for him? Wouldn't people be begging him to work? Not a happy customer here. I bought a five pack of underwear at Warehouse West City for a friend. We thought that we had the right size, but it turns out the lady needed the next size up. So we took them back to Warehouse West City hoping for an exchange since we had the original receipt or a refund. The warehouse refused to do either. Basically, their attitude was tough cookies. I get that there are health and safety concerns, but it's not like all the underwear were tried on, only the first pair. You can sell the remaining four and still get some money for it. $12 isn't a huge amount, but it's the principle of the matter. I don't like being ripped off. If that's your policy, then you need to have it posted somewhere that it can be seen so customers don't get caught out. And down in the comments of this Facebook post, this choosing beggar is getting absolutely blasted. Personally, I'm very, very glad that the undies I buy from the warehouse haven't been worn by someone else. As for transparent policy, it's always been clearly stated. So you expect the company to take a loss on a product and sell it for cheaper because you made a mistake and got the wrong size? How entitled. It states on the receipt that they can't be returned or exchanged, and most stores have signs up in the department for the fitting rooms. It's not just the warehouse, it's any store that sells underwear. It's on you to make sure you get the right size, not the company to take a loss because you didn't. You know, I'm trying to imagine a world where people could exchange underwear, and it's like, hello, I'd like to buy some underwear. Do you have any underwear back there that doesn't have any crabs on it? Or even worse, if women are constantly returning underwear to the store, then every store would have a group of like underwear sniffers who are just hanging around being like, excuse me, ma'am, are you done with those underwear? <laughs> <sighs> like, come on, lady, is this really the world that you want to live in? Because I don't think you do. Review three out of five stars. This mattress store sold us a nice bed, but two years later when we were moving, they refused to help us move the bed even after we offered to pay for it. So, in our opinion, all they do is sell beds. Don't expect anything else after that. Wait, what? All the mattress store does is sell beds? Yes, sir. You're correct. That is how mattress stores work. On this next post, a company tried to get OP to work on a project for free and OP declined. Then, OP gets this angry email from the director of that project. Hi, OP. I'm not really sure what to say. Given that you're Danny's friend, I won't say exactly how I feel or use the words that I have in my head. I'll leave that either to him or your skills of empathy. I don't really buy your excuse for not working, and I'm very disappointed and somewhat angry that you've let us down and you haven't even apologized. We were happy with you, and we were awkwardly waiting a long time based on your promise and confirmation of interest. If you hadn't been that interested, which I'll confidently say I'm sure you weren't based on this, you could have allowed us to continue our search and realistically found an alternative that was going to deliver in a much more comfortable timeline. Bottom line, you've really let us down, and I'm angry for the nature in which you did it. 
I am very disappointed in you because you're a very talented artist who appeared to be very nice, reliable, and professional. Anyway, I won't hold grudges, and I believe in karma. So, I just wanted to say my piece as honestly as possible, and I wish you good luck with your project so I can say when you're famous, man that artist was good, and they were about to work with us, but they let us down badly in the last minute. Okay, down in the comments, hope you provide some more context. This was a for-profit company that was trying to make some sort of film, and OP said that they were interested if there was pay. And there was no pay, so OP lost interest. Man, the thing that bothers me the most about this is this condescending, like, aggressive, disappointed attitude that this person has. They're talking down on OP like a disappointed father who caught their kid doing drugs. I'm really disappointed in you, and you really let us down. It's like, dude, I don't care if I let you down. You have to pay me to care. If you don't pay me... I don't give a shit. Good evening. Is the drawer still available? Are you really giving it away for free? Hi. Yes and yes. If you'd like, you can come and pick it up anytime today. I'm home all day, lol. Just let me know when you want to come. Thanks. Oh, that's great. Unfortunately, I can't come pick it up right now. Can you send me a picture of the drawer to make sure you really have it and it's in as good condition as the pictures you post on Kijiji show it in? I don't want any garbage. And of course, OP shares a picture of the drawers. Don't worry, I have it. By the way, my address is such and such for when you decide to take it. Good luck. It's not the best, but it's acceptable. And you'll have to drop it off on my place at blank since I can't come today and I want it today. I'm sorry, I don't have a truck and I can't pick it up by myself. If you want it, you'll need to pick it up from here. I'm sorry. Otherwise, I'll have to tell other people that it's still available. Let me know what you've decided, thanks. And how do you think that I'm supposed to come pick it up? Get a U-Haul truck or something if you don't have one. And you can only come after 9pm. I have guests before. I'm sorry, I cannot and will not do that. I'm letting other people know that it's available. Have a good day. What do you mean that you won't do it? You expect to throw garbage away and expect people to come and get it? You said yourself that you're home all day, so get off your ass and do something useful. Unbelievable! Forget this phone number. Wait, I don't like the rest of the stuff that people are giving away. You have to give it to me. Just bring it to my building. No need to take it to my apartment. How does that sound? On this next post, OP shares their annual performance review that they got from management, and to be clear, all of management got a 10% raise and bonuses. Hi, OP. The leadership team enjoyed meeting with you last week to discuss your past year. As always, we were impressed by your willingness to work hard and move the company forward, which was evidenced by you taking on another co-worker's marketing duties in addition to your own when he left in October. Leadership was also thrilled with your handling of the conference projects, as well as the consistently top-notch designs you put together throughout the past year. Going forward, we feel that your skills and work ethic make you integral to our success and can't wait for another outstanding year with you as part of the team. In addition to your normal duties, we would like you to continue handling the duties of the coworker who left until we're able to fill the position, which we plan on doing in Q3 of the upcoming year. Leadership has also identified several new ideas for new projects that we would like to discuss with you when you return from your vacation in June. As I'm sure that you're aware, COVID-19 has affected businesses the world over, and ours was no exception. As a result, there is currently insufficient funds in our budget for staff salary increases or bonuses. While we understand that this may come off as a disappointment, we know that not every reward is financial, and that you'll continue to find the work here fulfilling and allow you to grow personally and professionally. Our policy of allowing staff to telecommute will continue through the first two quarters, and our benefits package continues to be extremely competitive, in a time when many companies are cutting back. As we come out of the pandemic, we feel that we're going to be stronger than ever. Here's to a great 2023. Sincerely, your boss. Man, OP, you've been doing the work of two people, and they want you to continue doing the work of two people for the next six months at least. And despite you being an important member of the team, 
Clearly, you're not important enough to deserve a raise, so I'm sure they can live without you, OP. If I got a letter like that from my boss, I would have quit the same day. Not every reward is financial. Yeah, okay. Our next Reddit post is from my 3D net. This is going to be a very wild ride. In my five years as a freelancer, I have never experienced such a level of audacity. A few weeks ago, I had a client on one of the biggest freelancer platforms. Instead of contacting me in advance for a briefing, he ordered directly. His order description already raised some red flags because he sent along videos of his competitors and titled them shitty. That's not normally how a serious businessman works. This was, of course, some entrepreneur who wants to conquer the world of metaverse with his innovative ideas. His company works with credit cards and payment transactions. Read on to find out what this guy is all about, and then imagine that he takes care of your credit card and customer support. I have many gigs that are already going well and have super good ratings. However, this was my first customer of a new gig that I put a lot of effort into. But despite the red flags, I wanted to do my best and get a good review in to get my gig rolling. I sent him a script with all the details as well as the voiceover, and he confirmed everything. So I spent about half a week working on an animated explainer video for his business. I delivered a piece of work that I was proud of and what was also later described by the freelancer platform's customer support as very high quality after they looked at the case. The client, however, contacted me the very next day and was not pleased. He insulted the work, not maliciously, but very unprofessionally, and didn't seem satisfied at all. At the same time, he managed to not even define what exactly was the problem. He didn't say, I want you to change such and such at the 38 second mark. Instead, he said, the graphic looks too old, and watch the video and you'll see what doesn't fit. He was apparently looking for a completely different animation style, which I don't offer. He also claimed that my portfolio looked much more professional than what he got, which was simply a lie. The red flags were now raised to the horizon. Normally, I never, ever, ever offer refunds. I get paid for my work when I've delivered what was agreed upon. But at this point, I would rather cancel the order now instead of having to deal with two weeks of nonsense revisions and an unfriendly client who can't even say exactly what it is that he doesn't like, only to still end up with a bad review in the end. So I offered him a refund, and I pointed out that after cancellation, he, of course, has no rights to the script, visuals, sound, or music. This was customized content and licensed content from Envato, whose license is only valid after successful project completion and payment as stated on my page. Wordlessly, he accepted my refund and got his money back. Fast forward a week. I frequently check the websites and channels of cancelled projects to make sure they don't use my work after all. Of course, this guy uploaded my video and was now using it commercially to promote his company. Was I being unclear? I immediately wrote to him and explained that he was using the video illegally. What was he thinking? That he would get his money back and still get to keep and use my work? That's when he completely lost his mind. He started spamming me that he will not accept such false accusations. After all, he paid for the first version of the video, but since I was so lazy and decided to give him the money back, that wasn't his problem, so he still has the rights to use it. I explained to him, with screenshots of the terms of service, our chat history, and logical arguments, that this makes absolutely no sense, and that he's violating the terms of use of multiple platforms. At this point, I'd already reported this to customer service as well as Envato and filed a DMCA strike against the YouTube video that he uploaded. He went totally mental and said that he would sue me for any loss of his business because of it. And he'll let anybody on the internet know how bad my customer service is. You're gonna sue me for the unlawful use of a video that you don't own the rights to? I told him I was looking forward to it and I would like to see the lawyer that would take this case. I told him I was ending the conversation and taking further action from here, and after that, I blocked him. YouTube actually responded very quickly. Within two hours, the video was deleted. Suddenly, I received a new order. It was him, of course, who tried to be a bit friendlier via a second, forbidden account. As a sign of his goodwill, he now wants to buy the license. Let's be professional here. 
I don't know if he actually knows that he's in the wrong, but my guess is that he was only willing to pay me because he probably realized that I can take down his video. This dude had the audacity to order a gig that wasn't even worth half as much as the original order, while making it look like he was doing me a favor. So now, he demanded the license rights for less than half, and in addition, he wants to leave me a super nice and sincere review afterwards, of course. How could I refuse that generous offer? I told him that I don't want to work with him now or in the future, and I contacted the customer support again to cancel the order. He then stated, Good, so for the legal case, here's the proof. You don't want to solve the problem at all. There is no problem. You got a refund. You don't own the video. I do. And I can't be forced to work with you and accept your money. Goodbye. He went ahead and contacted customer support to tell them his side of the story. He lied about pretty much everything, told them that I canceled the order without his permission, which is technically impossible. Clients have to manually accept a cancellation. They can even decline it. It's literally visible to anybody in the order. Support contacted me and asked me what happened with this guy who seemed to be having a breakdown. I explained everything to them with proof of the conversation. The customer support then canceled this order as well. They were very helpful. However, to this day, this man is free to do business on the platform still. I looked at his profile again and saw that he leaves very bad reviews to other sellers and accuses them of something similar to what he did to me. He's an absolute psychopath and a narcissist. Just yesterday I had to strike the video again. This time he uploaded it to Vimeo thinking he could get around the YouTube strike system. If he keeps trying, I'll take his entire company page offline via DMCA requests. It may be a bit childish, but I've now made it my life's work. This dude usually seems to get away with it, and this time he chose the wrong guy. I have a feeling that this isn't the end of the story. Nicely done, OP. Technically, this is r slash choosing beggars, but I think we have a little cameo from r slash pro revenge here. That was r slash choosing beggars, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.